Today, we're going to be giving context on what not to say to an actor, or your crew members for that matter. I'm Weston, I'm a film director, and I own a film production company. My name's Jamie, and I started out as a first AC, and I've become a production designer. Yeah, yeah. And we have some questions. Cool. The first one is from Llama Storm. She says, she, he, they. They, they the say, llamas. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm a student. Do you have any advice on how to work with professional actors who are working for free? It's my first time using anyone but drama students. Mm. And the second question is from Marge, and it says, not a question, it just says, you're so good with actors. Okay, cool. Well, that's a good compliment, yeah. but I, it kind of feeds into this element of like working with actors. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we could also talk a little bit about really just communication in general on terms of communication on, on set. Yes. Um, we won't talk about client communication, but communication on set with actors and your, your fellow crew members. Yeah. Um, so first, w one thing that I've learned is, you know, he's mentioned here that he's working with actors for free. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't treat actors that are working for free any different than you would an actor that's getting paid. That's, yeah. that's what I yeah. found is you treat, you treat them all the same. Um, and you, you cater to them the same way. I think sometimes people treat actors like trash, especially when they're in like the or short like film. Or like they're gods and goddesses, which yeah, is also yeah, not. Yeah, the, the opposite side. Yeah. But especially like in the lower production stuff, sometimes yeah. they, they don't communicate very well. They don't give them information. Mm -hmm. And it's like you want to make sure that they feel like you're treating them as if you were paying a million dollars to have them on set. We find that you'll get a lot more dedication through the actors that when in a way when you cater to them, um, for us, when we are going to hire an actor or even have an actor on set for free um, for some of our short film projects, we're checking, you know, do you have any allergies? Mm -hmm. um, do you, you know, I'll even ask our actors, like, what's your love language? Yeah. You know, which for those of you who don't know, love language is just kind of like what makes you feel good? Is it compliments? Is it, um, I forget what the other ones are. Something that we do mm -hmm. in our company with everyone who works here is we take a strengths test. Mm -hmm. And in the strengths test, it tells you your top five strengths, what you're best at. And because we know what these strengths are, we know how to work with each other. Mm -hmm. And we've noticed that certain people who have certain strengths fit in certain areas of production better than others. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the ways that we can determine. Yeah. Working yeah, relationships. And we also ask our actors, you know, have you taken a strengths finder test or have you taken any of those other type like personality type tests? Just stuff to kind of help us understand who even, is this human being. Even if you don't like believe in it, it still gives you an idea of mm -hmm. who this person is or who they want to be mm -hmm. or like what they're trying to do, if that makes sense. It's mm -hmm. still helpful. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing. In terms of actors specifically, one thing that I've learned that is helpful is explaining to them their thought process. So I'm talking about coaching in terms of, or directing as in directing an actor. I find that sometimes people will be like, hey, just want you to be angry. And it's like, well, you know, what does that mean? It's hard yeah. to, to pull that, but it's like, so in your mind at this time, your actor is feeling hurt because of this and this and this. And you set like a mindset for them mm -hmm. and you encourage them to think that thought process in their mind and it will help their performance much better. Mm -hmm. That'd probably really be my only like tip with a director talking to an actor. Mm -hmm. um, but so let's go a little bit more into crew type communication. What are some things that you've learned that it, that have helped you to communicate or get along with your fellow crew members? So I started, I started in the film industry when I was like 16 and 17. Um, I was doing freelance for a while and then I started professionally working when I was 17 years old. And when I started working and even still, I look very young. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I tend to be treated poorly because of my age, even actors and, and people will look down on me, especially at first. Mm -hmm. And, um, they'll treat me differently because I look very young and they'll be like, are you supposed to be here? <laughs> Where's your mom? <laughs> Where's your mom? <laughs> and so, you know, I've learned that the best way to get along with everybody is to just be nice and positive. Mm -hmm. And I'm having a good time. If you're not, that's on you. But I'm, I'm having a great time and I love everyone here. And so I'll usually bring them water or be nice and then I'll just do my job. And they'll see how hard I work and the crew will see how hard I work. And it's almost like I'm accepted because of that. 
And it comes to a point where at the end of the day, people are like, don't go to school. You're amazing at your job. Like, just keep going the mm. direction you're going. Like, people are always, like, suddenly super passionate about me. <laughs> and they're like, you're amazing. Like, you're going to go places. And I'm just like, thanks. <laughs> yeah. And, and don't, <laughs> came from, but. don't try to be something that you're not. Yeah. I think that's, there have been people that we've had on set where they just kind of, they either want to be like super mm-hmm. out there and it's like, well, if you're not an out there type of person, it's like, just then be don't you. Be. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to be somebody you're not to be in this industry. And if you are trying to be someone you're not, then no one's going to want to work with you. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and actors, actors tend to be very, I would say a good actor tends to be very good at reading people. Mm-hmm. That's how they're able to portray different people. Mm-hmm. And the best thing you can do with an actor, um, paid or not paid, is just be real with them. Yeah. You know, be supportive when an actor is doing something and even a crew member when they're doing something they tend to be very vulnerable at that moment because you're putting out all it's your very effort vulnerable. a film set is a very vulnerable mm-hmm. place when a director of photography is doing his work you mm-hmm. know he's putting all of his effort into getting this image right and he's at a vulnerable moment an actor is yeah. putting out all of their you know heart and feelings into this character when you work on a film set you're working with probably some of the most passionate people in the world i and would say sensitive. and sensitive and <laughs> sensitive like Every time I've been on a film set, like people will cry sometimes because <laughs> of how passionate they are. Like sometimes they'll get so happy they'll start crying. Like everybody who's there is is a hundred percent there. Like they are not mm-hmm. there to play games, but they're also there to have a good time, mm-hmm. you know. And so it's not being on a film set and working with actors or crew or whoever you're working with, it really just comes down to good communication with them. Mm -hmm. And it comes down to being understanding of other people in their position. And when I, when I was going through school and being trained, there was one piece of advice that I got from, um, like a Disney assistant director while going through like a course. And he just said, even if somebody's like yelling at you and screaming at you, you just kind of have to know and realize like on really big film sets, like time is money. And these people who are higher up, it's their responsibility. They're taking on a lot. Mm -hmm. They're taking on a lot of stress. And it might not even be you that they're yelling at. Something might have happened before. And really just not taking things personally and being like, okay, I understand. What do you want me to do? Like, what do you need me to do? Mm -hmm. And then go, just go do it. And then afterwards, they'll probably be like, that was great. Yeah. Come back tomorrow, (laughs) please. I need you. And that's... But (laughs) I'd say, and that's great advice, but where possible, if you're the one in charge, try not to raise your voice. Yeah. Because it doesn't accomplish much. One thing that I found that's helpful is I especially on set i don't want to ever give blame to someone Um, if there was an issue i'll try to find a time afterwards and be like hey you know let's talk about this you know you've repeatedly done this you know if there's a mistake let's make a correction Mm -hmm. but never publicly because all it does is embarrass Mm -hmm. people and reduce their ability to yeah to i've been through perform and so like a lot of times like if there's an issue like oh why are you guys putting that over there i'll try to read address and be like oh what was the reason that you put that over there oh, that's what we thought you told us. Oh, I'm sorry. That was my bad. I must have misdirected you. Yeah. And it's like, even if I think I told them it correctly, I tend to try to pull the blame back to myself because I don't... It makes them feel more willing to be like, well, I didn't... Mm -hmm. I must have heard you wrong. Sorry. Where do you want to put it? It's such an easy fix that way versus like, why are you putting that there? And then it becomes an argument. It's like, well, I have They don't want to do their job anymore. Mm -hmm. Like versus this, it's like, oh, well, let's just put it where it needs to be. Yeah. It's that easy. Mm-hmm. It's not yeah. and, so easy to solve those types of things. And you don't want to, for me, it's like, I don't want to ruin the the emotions on set. Yeah. Because if you start getting people, you know, if people start feeling insulted, they're feeling like they're not being appreciated, mm-hmm. so that starts permeating from person to person. Yeah. And then pretty soon your actors can't perform because the they crew just have feels all the like pent crap. Up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. That's something that I feel like a lot of people don't understand about filmmaking, especially when first getting into it, is that there's not just relationships between the actors and the director. Mm-hmm. There's not just relationships between the director and the crew. There's relationships between the crew and the actors. Like for me, I've been on plenty of film sets where I'm just the PA, but I'm hanging out with the actors for like an hour while they're waiting, and we're all just chatting and mm-hmm. talking about family and stuff. And you know, you create all of these friendships while you're on a set. And that's something I've learned is that you want to treat everyone like they're your friends. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're working together for how many hours on end for how long. And if you're working with someone and you're just like, oh God, I hate this person and I can't work with them, then 
like I don't know I feel like if you kind of gossip about other people or you're creating a weird environment then everyone's gonna look at you and think well don't talk to that person because they're gonna talk crap about me you Mm -hmm. know it just makes you look bad to be negative and take everything personally and if someone does yell at you and you're like oh my god that person sucks then it's (laughs) like it's just it's just the energy about it no one wants to be around you and we're all really sensitive on film sets and so it's and also keeping in mind certain elements that for example with actors if you're a crew member, you don't want to be doing something that's distracting the actor during their performance. Yeah. So it's like having that respect towards each other, helping each other. Yeah. Um, a, a good principle tends to be for crew members, you want to be facing away during a performance. So like there's yeah, no or eyes. Or squat down. Or, or squat down so there's no eyes to connect with. Because the actors can get nervous really easily. And then they, your eyes look mm-hmm. to eyes. Mm-hmm. And so we want them to either, if they're looking at the lens, we want them to be looking at the lens or looking at their mark. Mm-hmm. But we don't want them when they, you know, pan and if their everyone's head. watching them, mm-hmm. then it it's a little nerve wracking, even for the crew. Yeah, like to be watching and they're just sitting there like, oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> so, so, so it's <laughs> keeping it in right. mind like, how can I help this person be their best? You know, yeah. try not to. Well, I mean, depends on what you're doing. You shouldn't be on your phone during takes. Yeah. Um, we allow phones on set for communication purposes. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, don't or be distracted. Or taking a lunch break and everyone's relaxing for yeah. a minute. And things get really stressful. I mean, for me personally, I'm very emotional and I'm very sensitive. And sometimes really small things will happen on set, but it's like small things throughout the day. And then for me, emotionally, it, it kind of builds up and then to a point where I don't understand why I'm upset. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of skews my communication and I can't get things done. And then I get really frustrated and everyone's like trying to work with me and Mm -hmm. being really nice because I work with really great people. But for me, I'm just like, why am I so mad? And then I'll be like, okay, everybody, I'm leaving for like the next 10, 15 minutes. (laughs) I got to go decompress. And sometimes I'll go sit in the bathroom and I'll just cry (laughs) and I'll cry it out. And it's also okay as an actor to need to do that because, Mm -hmm. you know, you have to... It's a very, like, vulnerable place on a film set. And if you're feeling emotional blocks in yourself... Find a way to deal with it. Find a way to deal with it. And and as a supportive crew member, you want to be able to be conscious of what's going to help your your fellow crew members be able to perform. Like, for me, for our cinematographer, I know that when he's getting frustrated and things aren't working out, I'll just go offer him some water, and sometimes he'll be a little snappy and stuff, and I'll just just be as nice as I can and be like, here's some water, do do you want a snack? And he's just like, no. And then I go sit on the side, and eventually he comes over to me and is like, so what music are you listening to? Yeah, like, you find those, like, um, And we relax a little bit. Yeah, Drew, our DP, and Jamie can connect very well on music when we're on set they're the ones who pick music for setup and stuff to kind of get everybody in good motion so it's like you figure out those levels that you can connect with well and even more so like when you have a team that you work so often with or people that you work with you kind of start to learn the cues and you start to learn what they need when when they're not doing so well or when they're feeling frustrated and you it's kind of like a trial of like (laughs) how do I help this person or when do I back off and just Mm -hmm. let them get done what needs to get done because one thing I've noticed on film sets especially with crew or even actors is that when the director and the DP or the director and someone or two people are trying to figure something out, everyone's trying to step in and yeah, be like, and throw in ideas. Go, what if you do this? What if you do this? And it's and then the d- DP's like, oh, I don't know, and and then the director's like, oh, I don't know, and then it's just it's really frustrating. Versus when two people are trying to figure something out, just kind of step off and mm-hmm. like go chat with the actor, and keep yeah, busy and, and that, that's, relax. That would probably be the last part is like recognizing that chain of command yeah. of where is it important for you to supply information? And it depends on what sets you work on. We encourage collaboration, yeah. um, but we try to find kind of a certain time where like he, there is a time and a place for collaboration. Um, and a lot of times I'll have crew members come offer something to me yeah. in a personal setting where it's like, hey, you know, Weston, did you think about this? And it's like, oh, that's, that's a great insight. That's what I'll do sometimes when, when we're on set and I'm seeing you guys talk. I'll usually, I have like a rule for myself. I can step in once. Mm-hmm. So when you guys are talking and if I have an idea, I'll be like, well, what about this? And sometimes you guys are like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And other times you're like, no, that wouldn't work. And if, if you say no, then I back off and let mm-hmm. you guys figure it out. Yeah, or find like, I know sometimes Jamie will approach me, um you know, in between a take or something and I'm over, you know, writing on some papers or something, she'll come in and she'll be like, hey, I just wanted to bring this up with you. What about this? And I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Or I can, you know, quickly understand, oh, that would work, but because of this and this, we can't. 
yeah. and then that's it. So it's like learning to communicate, yeah. when to communicate, and how to. When I've been on other film sets, they tend to be uh, bigger ones or ones that are different from ours. They tend to be a lot more chaotic and a lot more like a lot of people are yelling or there's it's it almost feels so much more stressful than it needs to be mm-hmm. versus when we've been on set it's very quiet on our sets and yeah. everyone's working together and there are times where like everyone kind of takes like an unspoken break and we'll kind of laugh for a minute and then suddenly we get back to what we're doing and it's immediately quiet <laughs> again but it's like it's a lot easier to work in an environment where it's a lot more respectable and it's a lot more calm um, especially when issues come up, because a lot of times when issues come up, everyone gets really stressed. But when it can be handled by just two people, for those two people to sit aside and be like, here's the issue, mm-hmm. what do we do? And then to solve it, it just, it makes the, the environment a lot easier for everybody to... Yeah, it, more collective. And kind of in closing, going a little bit back to advice for actors, but as well, this applies to the crew, is just be very specific and direct in what your feedback is. And lead feedback with the compliment and then the constructive correction to where like even with an actor, it's like after a take, I'll tell them, hey, this was great and be very specific. I loved how you did this and this and this. Awesome. I would love to see, can we make the ending a little bit longer? Can you drag it out? And same with a crew member. It's, hey, Jamie, you're doing a great job at such and such. I uh, would like to see, can we can we do a little better at this? Or, you know, could you take care of such and such? Or I think you could work on mm-hmm. this. And something that's really nice about our crew when we work together is everyone's really open to receiving that. And they're really open to, and sometimes we'll even ask, like, hey, I really loved how today went. I also feel like I have a lot to work on. Can mm-hmm. you tell me what I need to work on? Or, like, what what is your opinion? What would make it easier to work with me? Um, because we all really care about our working relationships. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important to work with people who care about that, too. Yeah. And, and that's only going to come when you've hired or have built up a team around you of those type of individu- individuals, mm-hmm. which is great because it makes, I know for me as a film production company owner, it makes my life so much easier when an employee comes to me and says, hey, Weston, what can I do to be better? And it's mm-hmm. like, holy crap. We've had that conversation a yeah, lot of and, times. And I've had multiple people from our company approach me, and, and it's great, but that's only established by creating those clear lines of communication. And it, working together and having the experience mm-hmm. of working together and being open to it and not mm-hmm. trying to be somebody we're not. Yeah, or you know, if you're an insulting person, people won't come to you for that type of feedback mm-hmm. because... No one wants to come to you and be insulted, right? It's really just so learning about how to communicate mm-hmm. as well and learning how to communicate, how learning how to critique while still giving the compliment as well. Yeah. So in the end, if you want to learn how to be a better communicator, watch um, anything about Mr. Rogers pretty yeah. much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's no joke. <laughs> like, like the life of Mr. Rogers and how he went yeah, about communicating he's things. He's fantastic. Um, he's a great individual. But but look to mm-hmm. individuals that you see that are great communicators mm-hmm. and you can kind of have them as your personal mentor. Yeah. Watch documentaries about them. You know, watch how they discuss things. Yeah. Um, it's you, not even about like watching. I, I feel like a lot of times we especially as filmmakers, we look to other filmmakers other for advice or, or other directors when really the information you need is not from what it's what the experience of being a director, but the experience of being someone who's really good at communicating mm-hmm. or public speakers. Or for me, when I started as a first AC and stuff, I wanted to be a director originally. And I didn't realize that a lot of the things I wanted to do in directing was actually production design. And so now that I've actually figured out what I enjoy doing in film i i want to study more design and history than anything and, to do and with not filmmaking. not necessarily from production designers but more just general yeah, design just general just in general mm-hmm. and like learning about history of the world and how that works because yeah. it pertains to my job and the same thing like jamie said it's like don't look to just film resources look to yeah. resources out there there's yeah. a ton of individuals who i've looked to who are wonderful communicators and like I've mr tried, rogers like mr rogers <laughs> and i've tried to implement what was successful for them yeah and it has helped me greatly and I encourage you guys to do the same and not only will that help you with your uh work environment on a film set but in your life in general your life will be a lot better <laughs> it will be a lot better i think everybody regardless of whether you're a director or an actor l- learn how to communicate like the world doesn't function without people in it and mm-hmm. it's it's really important to understand how to clearly communicate with people that you care about or people that you're trying to work through something with or people that you're even just meeting for a moment. You know, it's it's important to understand the difference between those types of communication and 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll make your life better. So mm -hmm. Llama Storm, thank you so much for the question. For those of you guys who have other filmmaking related questions, head on over to context.convo.org, submit your question so we can share it with the community and kind of help all of us learn and grow as we continue in filmmaking. Thank you guys so much. We'll talk to you later on the next Questions in Context. Bye.